it's Jennifer from Fiberflux. Welcome to week three of the 2018 Fiberflux Spring Crochet Along. We are hard at work making the springy stripes blanket and this week we're going to be decreasing. So just to show you the progress, last week we did the increase. So we started at the bottom and worked our way up, 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 up and used roughly half of our yarn and now we're going to be decreasing and using the remaining part of our yarn. So just to show you, we started at this bottom part and we're working up, 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 and then today I'm gonna to show you how to bring it back in to create the remainder of your square shape. So just to recap, week one we did intro and supplies, week two we did the increase, week three we're doing the decrease, and then next week we're going to learn how to do, if your blanket looks anything like mine, you're probably gonna have um, lots and lots of ends hanging off of your blanket. Actually, there they are. So you'll probably have lots and lots of ends hanging off of your blanket. We're gonna learn how to weave all those ends in. And also, um, I asked around a little bit in our crochet along group, and uh, we're gonna learn how to do multicolor pom-poms. So for each, um, let me find it, here it is. So for each corner of our blanket, we are going to embellish it either with a pom-pom, a solid pom-pom or multicolor, I'll show you how to do both, um, or a tassel. So, so uh, week four, we're gonna learn how to do pom-poms, solid and multicolor, tassels, and weaving in all the ends. So we're really just gonna finish up the blanket next week. So um, let's get started on the decrease part of the tutorial. Okay, so I'm just working that last double crochet of my row and the way you determine if your increase is finished is once you're done, now let me just pull this loop out so I don't lose it, once you're done with the width, so remember our square is we're working it on the bias, so once your blanket across this bottom point being where we began down here, once you're to the widest point of your blanket, when you've been crocheting and working your rows as wide as you'd like it to be, then we're ready to decrease. So once you're ready to bring your square back in, um, then we're going to start working the decrease. So let me show you how to do that. Now I worked my, just to show you here, I worked six rows of each color, then two rows of white, six rows of a color, two rows of white. So, um, and then I did, I started with pink, so I did pink, white, blue, white, purple. So pink, white, blue, white, purple, and so forth. So I just finished a purple section of my blanket, so I'm gonna move on to the white because that's the next color of my sequence. Now you'll wanna stick with your own sequence um, for your own striping pattern, obviously. So let me just cut the yarn and then we're gonna transition over to the white yarn and also the decrease of our square. Okay, so I'm just going to cut the yarn. Now, again, if you have a way that you like to join a new ball of yarn, um, definitely feel free to do that. I like to just cut mine and tie the new one right on. So just wrap the yarn around the hook and pull it through that loop, and we're ready to begin our new row and our decrease. So I'm going to be using white yarn, and I have a white background, so I'm going to grab a darker background so we can really see the contrast. Um, against the white yarn. Okay, so we're gonna go back to that last stitch where we just left off. Mine is over here, and um, I got my dark background so you can see this white yarn a little bit better. It's a little bit difficult with a white background and white yarn. Okay, so grab a little bit of yarn. Find my end here. And then what we're going to do is that last stitch that you worked, just go right in with your hook, insert your hook into that last stitch, and then what you can do is just bring the new yarn through. Okay, so just go ahead and pull that through, and then just tie it right on. Again, if you have a way of joining yarn, there's lots of different ways of joining yarn, please feel free to do that instead. I like to just tie it right on. Okay, so we're just gonna reinsert the hook back into that stitch, pull up a loop like that, and then we're going to turn our work. So now, let me just configure my blanket here a little bit. Okay, 
So then what we're going to do, once you've turned your work, we're going to slip stitch into the next three double crochets. So you can see our square. There's the edge, and we're going to be working across this way, okay? So slip stitch into the next three double crochets. So locate those double crochets, and we're going to slip stitch into that first one. So insert your hook, bring up a loop. Now bring that loop through the loop already on your hook. Then you're going to insert your hook into the next double crochet, bring up a loop, bring that loop through the hook. Then insert the hook into the next double crochet, bring up a loop, and bring that loop through the loop already on your hook, okay? So we just slip stitch across. And then we're going to slip stitch into the turning chain. So remember how when we worked our into these blocks, we have a turning chain into the top here? So also slip stitch into that turning chain. Insert your hook into the turning chain, space, bring up a loop, bring that loop through the loop on your hook. Okay, then we're going to chain three. One, two, three, and then we're going to double crochet into that turning chain space. So one, we get a little bit more yarn, two, and three. Okay, so that is the only thing that's different from this decrease versus the increase because for the rest of the row, we're going to proceed as we normally would, okay? So let me go a little bit of ways into the row just to refresh your memory. So then we're going to join with a slip stitch, three in that third chain, one, two, three, right there. Join with a slip stitch, just like that, then chain three, one, two, three. Then work three double crochets, remember, into that turning chain space. Same thing we've done in every row before this one. It's just the way we start the row that is a little bit different because by decreasing, we're removing one of these squares from our blanket, and that will in turn decrease it, okay? So once again, join with a slip stitch in that third chain up, chain three, one, two, three, and uh, hopefully this part of the row, since you've worked the whole increase, hopefully this part will seem very familiar. Okay, so work your three double crochets. That was one, this is two, and three. And join with a slip stitch in that third chain up once again, and then chain three. One, two, three and then three double crochet in the turning chain space. So we're just going to work this all the way across our row, and then when we get to the end of this row, what we're gonna do is, I'm gonna show you how to finish this row. It's the same thing we've been doing, the same way to finish your row, and then I'm gonna show you one more time how to get started on the decrease, and then you'll be able to finish your blanket, and we'll begin the next part next week. Okay, I'm coming up to the end of the row, just join with a slip stitch, and we're going to work into that very last square of our row. Same thing we've been doing all along. So go ahead and chain three. One, two, three. Work three double crochets into that last turning chain space. One, two, and three. Okay, so I'm just going to show you one more time, same thing we did a, a little bit farther back of how to transition to the next row. So we're going to work on one more decrease row just to show you one more time. Okay, so once again, we're going to just turn our work, just like that, and then we're going to work a slip stitch in each double uh, crochet. So slip stitch in each of the next three double crochets, okay? So let's work a slip stitch in the first one, slip stitch in the next one, slip stitch in the next one, and then we're also going to work a slip stitch in the turning chain space, just like that, okay? So then we're going to just proceed as we normally would, okay? We got the decrease part out of the way, there's only just a small little section at the beginning. So once, once again, chain three, one, two, three, and then this will feel familiar again, this part. And then work three double crochets into that turning chain space. So one, two, and three. I'm gonna go part of the way into the row once again, 
and then you'll be all ready to continue with your decrease. This is just what we did in the previous row, I'm just kind of refreshing. Okay, so count three chains up, insert, join with a slip stitch, and once again, three chains, one, two, three, work three double crochets into the turning chain space, one, two, and three. Now let's look at our work here, and I have a little snag in my yarn. Okay, let's look at what we've done. So as you can see, instead of making a V now, our blanket is starting, it's reached a point. And now it's starting to, we're gonna start getting a flat edge as we work up, okay, to establish our square. So let's just do work a couple more of these little squares and then you can finish the whole rest of your blanket. Now if you need to see the decrease part, I've done it twice now um, for the first row of white and the second row of white. If you need to see this again uh, at any time or if you set your project down and come back and forgot how to do it, just back up this video a little bit and you can always re-watch it as many times as you need to and watch you know the decrease part again. Also if you hop on over to the Fiberflux blog and I'll put the link down below the written uh, pattern will be there as well if you need to just peek at that. Okay so we're just working our row as we normally would all the way across. Okay so if you want to go from one color to the next um, I'm going to show you a little trick because if you fasten off the yarn too soon, you can get, um, see this little line of white that's on top of my square? Uh, see how it's showing on both sides like that? If you want to avoid that, see we want a solid square of purple. If you want to avoid that, I'm going to show you something. Now if you're going from one row to the next and you're sticking with the same color, it'll just blend and you'll never know. But um, I wanted to just show you a quick little tip. Um, Normally I would go to white, but I'm gonna gra I grab the purple yarn just so you could really see what I'm talking about here. Um, so what we wanna do is I just finished a row and I'm gonna join with a slip stitch to finish off the row, the same thing we've done all along. And you can see we're at the end of our row, we have a straight side. So instead of cutting the yarn and fastening off at this point, I'm gonna stick with this yarn and turn my work. Remember uh, we turn the work, now let me just, my blanket has grown quite a bit, so it's, let me just get this turned around here. Okay, so we're back to the other side, and now instead of cutting off the yarn, go ahead and with the same color, the same blue, go ahead and work your three slip stitches, okay? So slip stitch, slip stitch, slip stitch, okay? And now we're ready to cut the yarn. Okay, so let me just show you here cut the yarn and fasten off. Because if you work those slip stitches in a different color, if you were to join your color before you did those slip stitches, you'd have this line of purple, because we're gonna just go to purple next. So you'd have this like line of purple and it would really show up. Now if this doesn't bother you, definitely just don't worry about this part. But um, you know, if you don't want that little line there, then work your slip stitches before you switch yarn, okay? So that seam stitch we just tied off that last slip stitch we did insert your hook into that last slip stitch bring the new yarn through now again for my color sequence I would normally do white but I want to show you what I mean with a color because we're working against a white background okay so I'm just tying my yarn right on and then reinsert your hook back into that same stitch bring up a loop and then chain three one two three and then we can just proceed. So see this turning chain space? Work your three double crochets in that turning chain space. And your, your first block of your row will start where it's supposed to and you can avoid, let me grab, where is it? I lost it. My blanket's getting much bigger, which is a good thing. Uh, you can avoid this uh, kind of capped off look of this line of color and you can just have like a solid square. So you'll have, I can hold them side by side here, you'll have a solid square versus a square with this white line. Okay, so just a quick tip for going from one color to the next on a row, if you want to avoid this little um, 
top part here, just do what I did here. Now, if you're going from like, let's say you're going from like pink to pink, it doesn't matter, okay? So just a quick tip for changing colors. So what you're gonna do is just keep working your decrease rows over and over and over and over until you get to um, the other point of your blanket. So remember, we started down here at this bottom point, and you're just gonna keep working until your square comes back in, okay? So be sure to join me next week because for week four of our project, we're going to be doing some of the finish work. So we're gonna tackle some of these ends. I'm gonna show you how to weave in the ends. And then if you wanna add some finishing touches to your blanket, like if you want to add uh, a pom-pom at each corner or a tassel, I'm gonna show you how to do all of that. I have some yarn leftovers from uh, all of these colors. So we'll learn how to make a single color pom-pom, a multicolor pom-pom, and I'll also show you how to make a tassel. I'm going to be putting pom-poms on mine, but I know some of you like tassels as well. So we'll learn how to do all three of those finishing touches. And if you haven't joined our Ravelry group, be sure and hop over to the Ravelry group. Um, there is a Fiber Flux Crochet Along group, and again, I'll put the link down below for that. And in that group, you can ask questions, there are so many people um, that help others. You can show off your work. If you have um, even color questions, like does this color go with this color, for example, people ask all kinds of questions. And there's so many wonderful people in the FiberFlex community that are willing to help and jump right in. So join that group if you haven't done that. And also, if you wanna show off your work or your work in progress pictures, be sure to use the hashtag FiberFlexCal in your social media and um, we, Love seeing your work. I know the Fireflex community is wonderful at sharing photos, and I love seeing your work and um, looking through all those. So hop on over to the group, and also be sure to join us next week for week four. We're going to be adding all of the finishing touches to our blanket. So that's it for week three. Thanks so much for watching, and be sure and click the subscribe button to get all the latest Fireflex video updates. Thanks again. Bye.